What's going on YouTube? We are back again and this time we're going to be talking about the easiest, least strategically inclined method to get yourself a flawless hard mode Zuck run and the combined Zuck cape. This method will also work for farming the pieces and the log and all that good stuff. And yeah, let's get right into it. Uh, in the last video, there were a lot of questions about my gear and my invent setup. So I thought I would take a little bit of time right now and actually go over it so that there are fewer questions next time around. So looking at my invent really quick, that's an overload. These are adrenaline renewal potions. You could also use a replenishment potion or an adrenaline potion or an enhanced replenishment potion. All of those would work. Uh, we've got super restores, sardoman brews. I've got vulnerability bombs. Uh, we've got a power burst of vitality, which can be helpful. This is a weapon poison plus 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 flask. And then I've just got all my necromancy runes, a couple blue blubber jellyfish. And then the last item here is actually a stamina potion. You need some kind of potion that will boost your run energy. I personally prefer a stamina potion, but you could also use an ogre flask or or even a regular super energy potion would do the trick, but stamina potion is, in my opinion, the best bet. Looking at my actual gear setup, what I've got here is I have three pieces of the tier 90 tank gear for the necromancy setup. I've got cinderbane gloves just because whenever you're fighting a poisonable target, uh, cinderbanes are extremely good. And then I've also got myself uh, a pair of obsidian boots. So part of the strategy here is a ton of damage reduction. And one of the ways to get additional damage reduction is a pair of obsidian boots. Now, the boots by themselves only give you 5% damage reduction, but as long as you're wearing any part of the outfit, you can actually go to the fight cauldron and donate Tockle to this coffer. And in doing so, you get yourself an additional 10% damage reduction for a total of one hour if you do it three times. And because of that, just from my boot slot, I get 15% damage reduction from the entire Zuck run. Now I've got my weapons. I'm just using the regular Necromancy tier 90 stuff. I've got a rune pouch. Inside that rune pouch, I've got the runes. I'll show them on screen uh, just for the Prism of Restoration because that will heal up my Hellhound. And then I've got the Toggle Zo Ring and Moda Souls. And then, of course, I've got the Necromancy Zuck Cape from Normal Mode from the last video. As for auras, we're going to be using the Aegis Aura as well, uh, because that also gives you even more damage reduction. And you'll see really quickly throughout the setup that we're not going to be taking a ton of damage here. And I would actually say this method is probably even more effective than the method we used in the last one, because Hard Mode Zuck is a little bit harder. Outside of that, the one other thing I was going to mention is there were a lot of questions about how I got my HP to 15,497. And really quickly, there are two ways to boost your HP before a PVM encounter. So either you can do a bonfire boost in addition to the thermal boost from either Uglug or Anacrania, or you can do the Desert Panth Aura combined with the thermal boost from Anacrania. If you have the Desert Panth Aura, it's technically better, but it also requires having the aura. If you don't, bonfire will work too. I would not advise buying the Panth Aura just for this. You shouldn't need this many life points. But I'm also using a Jazz book. Uh, Jazz book is not the best book for this. I would actually say a Wen book is probably better, but it is the cheapest book as of right now. So I figured we'd go with the cheap one because we shouldn't need anything super expensive for this run. The last thing I want to talk about before we get into the actual fight are the things that I've applied at the bank. So this buff here on my buff bar is Penance Powder. Penance Powder will give me prayer for damage that I'm taking, and it's extremely nice in the Zuck fight because it will allow you to virtually use no prayer throughout the entire run. If you're not using Penance Powder or the Penance Aura, you'll probably need one or two additional prayer restoration potions. The other buffs I wanted to mention are my incense. I'm currently using Quorum Incense Sticks to boost my poison damage and Lanadime Incense Sticks to boost the length of time that my overload lasts. If this is your first ever hard mode Zuck run and you don't want to have to worry about overloading, consider bringing a second overload as well because you don't want to get into a situation where you're towards the end of your Zuck run and then you realize that you don't have any overload left. I personally don't think it's necessary to bring two, but if you tend to go a little bit slower, it's absolutely worth it. Looking at the Revo bar that we're going to be using for this entire run, I've got my Skeleton, I've got my Ghost, and then I've got Touch of Death and Soul Sap. And this is going to be the entire Revo bar, but you're also going to notice that my auto attack is on my bar. And the reason for this is there is one section of the Zuck run where you do need to do a little bit of manual attacking. But when we get to that point, I'll explain exactly why and how we're going to go about it. So that is why the auto attack is there so that you can hit it while moving around. Now, I wanted to keep the rotations in this as simple as humanly possible, so we're not really doing any like full-blown rotations or any ultimate abilities or anything like that. But what we will be doing is whenever you have Death Skulls available, now that we've got our Zuck Cape, uh, just use it when it's available as often as you can, and that will basically be pretty much the only manual input you need for the entirety of the waves. And now that we've got a Revo Bar figured out, we're going to pot up and we are going to get started. Uh, the reason we're using the Taco Zo Ring is it gives you additional damage, not against Zuck himself, but against the waves, so it can be helpful. One additional thing I'm doing is, as of right now, you can spawn your Conjurers outside of combat, and they won't require any adrenaline. 
And what that means is if you got to the end of a wave or you finished killing a monster in the caves, what you could actually do is immediately hit your conjure key mind and summon up a conjure. And in doing so, it won't cost you any adrenaline. So that's a really nice tip. If you want to do that, you can, you do not have to. I did a ton of testing, it is not required. Um, but just did want to note that it is a really nice method to get all of your conjures and your ghosties and all that stuff without actually using any adrenaline. Basically, the bulk of this is very, very simple. All we're really doing here is we're letting our conjures kill everything, and the bulk of our damage is coming from Command Ghost and our Skeleton, and our heals as well are coming from the Ghost. Uh, so yeah, wave one done, and as expected, we're actually going to be hanging out in the southeast corner of the room, and we're going to be hanging out here for pretty much the entire run. The main difference is between normal mode and hard mode, Zach. First off, hard mode can actually drop the sword pieces, and the drop rates are a lot nicer. So that is a really, really big benefit, and the GB per hour on this is extremely good. But outside of that, in terms of the actual difficulty aspect, it's more difficult for two reasons. The first is that all of the monsters have 50% additional life points compared to normal mode, so it's a little bit harder to take them out quickly and easily. And then the second and by far the most kind of annoying addition to hard mode is Zuck will have some dialogue lines that he will say, and then he's actually going to launch fire across the screen. So for example, he'll say fall and burn to ash right here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to zoom out and scroll out ever so slightly, and you're going to see a flame wall spawn all the way to the west, and it's always going to launch directly on my character's location. Holding down your middle mouse button to rotate your camera is really nice for this, and then you can just scroll around, look for the firewall, and then you can dodge it. And for me, I could either go north or I could go south here to dodge this thing. I choose to go south because that is in my safe spot. Really quickly, these are the dialogue lines he can say, and I'd strongly advise having your voice acting on for this because that will make it a million times easier. But yeah, these are the only three lines that you have to really look out for whenever he says this. There is going to be a firewall flying at you. Okay, so the first line is the skies burn. The skies burn. The second one is fall and burn to ash. Fall and burn to ash. And then the third one is flames consume you. Flames consume you. Uh, so yeah, basically anytime you hear those in your ear, you know that there's a firewall coming towards you. Now, if you were to get hit by it, it's actually not the end of the world here. It does about 1500 damage with this setup. So you could actually not move at all and just tank the whole thing. Would not advise doing that. It will hit you a bunch of times. But uh, yeah, just as a reminder, it's not going to one shot you. Uh, but yeah, my advice is just scroll out a little bit. Take a look at where it's coming from. Don't panic and move out of the way. Also worth noting that you can absolutely use food while you're learning this. You're not gonna use a lot of food for this run. I think I did this whole run on one singular brew and uh, this was like far from an optimal run as well. So yeah, just as a note, that is pretty much what your food is for. It is for learning the mechanics and for dealing with the waves. That's kind of the most important mechanic in, in hard mode. It's sort of designed so that you can't camp the same safe spot for the whole run, but with some good movement, you actually can just camp the same safe spot for the entire run. So you're gonna see here for these waves, the main healing I'm getting is just from my ghost. I'm also camping soul split for some of the waves, I'll choose to use prayers, but for the majority, I'm just camping soul split and I'm just letting my revo bar do all of the work. I mentioned this earlier, but if you wanna go faster, you can absolutely use some of your necromancy stuff. You could use soul scythe, you could use threads of fate and, and combo it with your, uh, your volley of souls and your finger of death. And you could also use your death skulls as often as you'd like. In this one, I elected to basically go as low input as humanly possible. So I decided to let Revo take the wheel for the vast majority of this. And there we go. We've got another flames consume you. And this time around, it was a north to south one. And for these ones, it's really, really nice in this safe spot because if you're standing all the way against the rock wall, what you can do is you can just stand all the way east. You'll still be behind the rock wall and it will completely miss you. So that's why I really like this safe spot for hard mode, Zach. It works extremely well, especially for the firewalls with regard to not making you have to run really anywhere. Because either way, no matter where it comes from, you can still dodge it while staying behind the rock wall. Sometimes what you're going to find is you're going to be waiting for the next wave to start and it's just not going to start. Uh, just double check that there aren't any mobs that are stuck because this lure is pretty well designed to prevent everything from attacking you all at once. If you were standing in the middle of the room, everything would spawn and be hitting you all at once. This kind of helps filter out all of the monsters so that you only have to deal with a couple at a time. That's sort of the, the whole benefit of using a lure in the first place. As for priorities, you want to prioritize the bats over anything else if you can. Um, and as you can see there, that was my first time using Death Skulls. Once again, it will speed things up. Not needed, but it is quite nice. And you're going to notice here, I just got to fall and burn to ash at the very beginning of a wave. That is super unlucky. It's sort of a timing based thing where the firewalls run on a timer that is separate to the wave count. But as you can see, you want to prioritize dodging the firewall and the lure should make it so that you're not getting hit by too many things, even once you have to move. So right now I'm being attacked by one melee and one ranger, and that is it. You're also gonna notice here that my ghost is stuck. And because of that, I'm taking an absolute ton of damage and I'm not getting healed up to full. The ghost will only heal you if he is attacking. And because he can't attack right now, 
He's stuck. There's no call conjures button, so if this happens, just plan to potentially have to eat some food or use your enhanced Excalibur if you have one. In a hard mode Zack, all of the challenge waves are exactly the same. So there are three challenge waves and they go exactly the same way every time. Instead of getting a different kind of igneous mob each time, you're gonna get one of each. The melee will spawn north, the ranger will spawn west, and the mage will spawn east. This is the path that I would advise for it. I think it breaks up the wave really nicely. So what I would do is I would start off at the end of wave three by going towards Zuck's feet. The first mob that's gonna spawn in wave four is gonna be the Igneous Melee Air. And what I've done here is I'm using Target Cycle, which you do not need. What I'm gonna do is my very first ability on the Igneous Melee Air is going to be Soul Strike because you need a stun to be able to deal full damage. After using Soul Strike, you wanna try to do as much damage as you can. So what my advice rotation would be, and I'll put it on screen, is I would use Soul Strike, and then after using Soul Strike and it's been stunned, I would then use my Death Guard special attack. Death Guard should do the vast majority of his HP, and then that way he's gonna die pretty quickly, and then you can move on. After the melee or dies, what I'd advise doing is going all the way to the southwest corner of the room. The southwest corner should prevent most of the mobs from being able to attack you. And the main one we're looking out for is this melee -er. Ideally, this melee -er is not attacking you while these two rangers are also on you, and then that way you can break things up by combat style. If the melee -er is on you, it's not the end of the world, but prep Preferably, you should either be able to get the melee or stuck on this lava vent where my cursor is, or on this one over here if you're a little bit slower. Now, the second igneous mob is the ranger, and for the ranger, you have to use a powerful ability to be able to make him vulnerable. And for me, the powerful ability that I am using is finger of death. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use finger of death, he's going to stop healing, and then we're just going to kill him with my revo bar as normal. Also, going to note here that you may need to do this multiple times. So whenever the bar above his head fills up, what's going to happen is he's going to then need another powerful ability to drop it a second time. So for me, uh, this did happen. So I'm actually going to use Finger of Death a second time, and then we're going to be able to continue. There we go. And he's dead. Uh, now, worth noting, throughout these challenge waves, you're also going to continue to get the Firewolves. But a lot of the time, they're just going to default miss you because you're not really staying in one spot for too, too long. After the second mob, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to surge over to the third mob. I'm going to wrap around this corner and then i'm gonna kill the magic mob for the magic mob it's really easy there's no special ability you have to use all you have to do is stand inside of the bubble and then the bubble will burst once the bubble bursts should fall over very very quickly and easily i'm also electing to pray magic here because the vent is hitting me a whole bunch and i'm getting a burn you can also get rid of the burn via freedom but if you do want to be standing in this location it can be good to pray magic and now with all of the igneous mobs done i've got my special action button available with the special action button as soon as i hit it it will insta kill all of the mobs on screen and then i'll be able to actually go to zuck's feet and attack him for a little bit you're going to see here that i'm going to insta kill them pretty much instantaneously and then i'm going to head over to zuck and i'm going to do a little bit of damage this is a good moment to talk about some dps related things with necromancy because I wanted this to be an easier, smoother, kind of cleaner run, what I decided to do is actually not one cycle this 100,000 damage that I have to do, and instead we're going to go for a two cycle. For this two cycle, you could just let Revo take the wheel and do everything with your Revo bar, but it is a really good opportunity to practice looking at your stacks and using them. So for example, I had three souls, so what I've done here to deal damage is I used Volley of Souls, and that's actually going to, you know, loose all three of my souls. You could also use Finger of Death, your Death Guard special, and you could also use Skulls if you wanted to. So all lots of really, really good options, but the objective here is not to do 100,000 damage. It's actually to do a little bit less than that. Because if we're going for a flawless suck run, what you want to make sure you do is you want to go into the challenges with adrenaline and with stacks. So if I burn all my stacks and all my adrenaline, getting zucked down 100,000 life points, I am likely to fail the challenge. So it's kind of a nice little tactical thing where if you do not do 100,000 damage to Zuck after each challenge wave, it just repeats over and over and over again as many times as you need. Because we didn't use any food for it, all we're losing here is time. And I think it's a really viable, good strategy to make sure that the challenge waves are a little bit less challenging. So now here, we're just gonna repeat the exact same thing we did last time. Exact same rotation, exact same order. And yeah, we're just gonna go through all of it once again. And then once the last Igneous Mob is done, exact same deal as before. In this instance, I'm actually letting my Revo Bar build a little bit. And you can also build on Zuck's feet if you would like to get a little bit more adrenaline. So I'm just building on him while he's immune without hitting my special action button. And then once I'm happy with my adrenaline amount, I'm actually gonna hit my special action button. And then we're gonna finish off that last 13,000 life points. And now we're into the first challenge. There are a number of ways to do the first challenge, but the most important aspect of it is the Threads of Fate incantation. Now, you can actually use this for all of the waves and it's absolutely unreal. But in the name of keeping things simple, this is the only time I use Threads of Fate in the entire Zuck run. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna stand in the middle of the room, I'm gonna cast Threads of Fate, and then the rotation is extremely simple. 
I am going to Volley of Souls. I'm going to Soul Sap. And then I'm going to Volley of Souls again. And that should pretty much clear the entire wave. The other really fun thing you can do on this as well is Death Skulls is quite fun because it will just bounce around and pretty well one-shot all of them. So kind of two good options, but I think the Threads of Fate, Volley of Souls, Soul Sap, Volley of Souls works really, really well. It's simple, it's effective, it's fun, it's good. And then after the challenge wave, we are getting into wave six. One difference between this and in normal mode is in normal mode, I went right back to the southeast save spot instantaneously for wave six. But this time around, I'm actually going to stand north just for this one wave. We're already static here, so really just don't move. And for wave six, you're going to get a whole bunch of rangers and then a jad is going to spawn all the way south. For these rangers, it's pretty easy. We're just going to let our repo bar do all of the damage and take them out. And ideally, what you want to do is you want to block these meleeers from hitting you if you can. The most important thing to really prioritize when you're doing Zuck is you want to make sure that you're not being hit by multiple different combat styles at once when you can help it. With this setup, you should be fine if you do end up in that situation, but this is an example of a really nice lure because the meleeer is trapped. This meleeer is also trapped, even though it doesn't look like he is because this safe spot is way, way bigger than it looks. And yeah, we're just going to use our skulls. We're going to whittle away at the rangers. And then once everything around me is dead, we're actually going to hop out of our safe spot and we're going to get on that meleeer. And once everything's dead, we are going to get on the Jad. Something worth noting too is you always want to be casting Darkness. It lasts for 12 minutes. Keep it up as often as you can because your dodge chance is going to be absolutely ridiculous. You're going to have a ton of damage reduction. It's worth noting that if you decide to tank a Jad hit, it should only hit you between six and 7,000 damage. So you could actually tank more than two of them without even having to worry about it. And as soon as Jad is down, we are going to head over to wave number seven. Something I wanted to note as well is people were noticing that a lot of their adrenaline is being taken or stolen by Command Ghost. And I just want to mention that's actually exactly what's supposed to be happening. Summon and Command Ghost are the only things on your Revo bar that are actually going to be taking your adrenaline away and they are well worth it. The Haunt buff is extremely strong and that's kind of what allows your skeleton to go really, really hard and do a ton of damage. Just remember that with Necromancy, the value of adrenaline is very different. And although with this setup, you may not be able to use Death Skulls super often, you do not need any adrenaline to use Volley of Souls or Finger of Death so long as you have the appropriate stacks. So because of that, it's not a bad thing or like a mistake or anything that the majority of your adrenaline is being given to the Command Ghost. So this was one of the only waves in this entire run where I actually elected to eat some food. These Rangers just kind of go ham. They do a lot of damage and with this safe spot in this lure, you end up taking a little bit of damage on this wave. But I do want to mention, I believe this is the only wave on the entire run where I actually needed to eat food. Just a quick note that if you need to guzzle some food on this one, absolutely welcome to. It's kind of a tough wave because as long as the big rangers have their feet planted, they do more and more damage each time. In addition to this, with the mages, if they're attacking you for too long, they summon a miniature version of themselves that also does a ton of damage. So it's kind of hard to find a good priority set because the mages will hurt a lot and so will the rangers. But yeah, so for this wave, this was the only point in the entire run, I believe, that I had to eat. And if you have to eat for this one, not an issue at all. Also doesn't help that my ghost was stuck for a good chunk of it. You can notice there that I dropped a Prism of Restoration. I'll throw the runes for it on screen once again. Uh, but yeah, the Prism of Restoration is how we're healing our Hellhound. If you want to heal it with scrolls, you're also welcome to. But I find the Prism a little bit easier just because you can cast an infinite amount of them. And it's really easy to remember at the end of every couple waves. I'll look down at my Hellhound HP. That's looking a little low. Let's drop a Prism. And uh, that is going to be the end of wave seven. Heading into wave eight, it's more of the same. We're camping the exact same safe spot. And for wave eight, you get some mages, some rangers, and some melees. But in this safe spot in this location, you don't really have to worry too, too much about the meleeers, which is really, really nice. This is a good example of a hard boat Zuck moment where this can just happen sometimes and it will mess you up ever so slightly. So what's happened is I'm in a pretty safe location. The only thing attacking me is one ranger, but there are a lot of mobs crowded around me. But then Zuck says the skies burn and I have to move or I'm going to take an absolute ton of damage from the fire. So what I like to do here is I move all the way east and in moving east what I've done is now all of the monsters on the west side of that blockade will not be able to attack me anymore but instead everything on the east side will be able to attack me. So because of this now I have one meleeer and three rangers attacking me. So what I'm going to do in this instance is I'm going to kill off the meleeer and then I'm going to actually throw on deflect range for one of the first times in this run through just to give me a slightly easier time healing up while I take out these three rangers. Three Rangers isn't the end of the world to tank, and you're going to notice that we have a silly amount of damage reduction. With no damage reduction, these range hits could be as high as 2,000 damage, and I'm currently being hit 
like 700s at very, very most. And because of that, we're actually able to gain life points even despite tanking three mobs at the same time. We're gonna get the last ranger down, and then it is more of the same. We're just gonna clear out these last few mobs in this location. The thing that's really nice about a setup based method for this is if you wanted to use all of your stacks and you wanted to use threads of fate, you could clear these waves a lot more quickly and a lot more safely as well, because the more damage you're doing, the less damage you're taking. But even taking things really slowly and just letting Rebo take the wheel, I was able to relatively safely clear all of these waves. And that's why I think this setup is extremely strong. It's worth noting too, people had asked if they don't have the Aegis Aura, if there are other options. You could use the Majorat Aura, the Vampirism Aura, the Penance Aura, all absolutely fine options. And it's totally up to you what you want to do there. But if you do have the Aegis Aura, it is by far the best bet for a really easy safe suck run, just because the damage reduction stacks with everything else and it ends up getting pretty ridiculous. For wave nine, we've got yet another challenge wave, and it's exactly the same as the previous ones. We can speed through it because there is nothing different about it than any of the previous ones, and we're actually gonna go through it twice, just like the last time. So exactly the same deal as before, I'm spending some of my stacks and we are lowering the boss HP, and now we've got 40,000 left before we get into the second challenge. Same as before, we're gonna go through the challenge once more, and I'm just gonna skip fast forward through all this. We don't need any food, it's nice and easy, it's nice and safe. And then we're now gonna get in to the second challenge. So what I do here is I'm gonna let my Revo Bar build up at Zuck's feet. And then once I hit my special action button, we're just gonna deal a little bit of damage to Zuck. Because it's only at 40K, I didn't need to spend any of my stacks. So I'm quite literally just letting my ghost and my skeleton do all the damage I need. For the second Igneous mob, his deal is he will not take any hit splats under 3000, which means we can't really let our conjurers do this one and we're gonna have to handle it ourselves. Necromancy has a lot of high damaging abilities, so we've got good options here. What I'm going to elect to do is I'm going to use a vulnerability bomb because 10% extra damage is quite nice. And then I'm going to start things off with Volley of Souls. After Volley of Souls, I used my Death Guard special and he got completely obliterated. With the start of wave 11, we are going to leave the area where we got spat out at Zuck's feet and we're actually going to go back to the southeast corner. In this way, we're going to have two Jads that are going to spawn, and this safe spot is going to lure both of the Jads so that neither of them can attack you. From this point, we've got a Meleer, some Bats, and a bunch of Mages. What I like to do is I like to get rid of the Meleer first. I just think it's by far the easiest. And then at that point, if we want to, we could just put on Deflect Magic and deal with all the Mages, or we can deal with them one at a time. It's completely up to us, but we should not take a lot of damage for this wave. It should be nice and clean, nice and easy. And that's a good way to get wave 11 done. It's worth noting here that if you are the kind of person that likes to tank jad hits just for fun and then resonance them so that you heal a bunch of HP back, uh, you can't really do it on this one because this mage is also attacking me in the corner. They're both standing next to each other. So just did want to note here that just prioritize flicking your jads or praying correctly for them. The mage won't end up doing any damage and you'll be good to go. But if you wanted to try and get a rezo, the mage could snipe it and then you would have a bit of a bad time. So we're going to get rid of the first Jad, and then we're going to head over to the second Jad and clear him out as you would expect. Once the second Jad is down, we're going to go back to the southeast corner of the room. Wave 12 is the wave that can be considered by many to be the toughest wave in the entire Zuck run. And this lure is extremely effective because it's going to break it up perfectly for you and make it probably one of, if not the easiest waves in the entire thing. The thing that makes this wave difficult is you get two big mages, two big rangers, and then a bunch of small rangers and bats all at the same time. And if you're tanking the big mages and the big rangers at the same time, well, you're gonna take an absolute ton of damage. But if you're standing in this lure correctly, what you're gonna notice here is one small mage is gonna spawn, you can clear him out. And then what you're gonna notice here is the two big rangers are gonna be able to attack you and the bats are gonna be able to attack you. But both of the big mages are gonna end up getting stuck. The first big mage is all the way northeast and then the other one is stuck in the northwest corner. And because of that, you can actually break up the wave in a way that is really, really nice and easy. Then we're gonna take out the rangers. I'm soul splitting the whole time. And then once the rangers are down, at that point, we can actually unshake the mage and get onto the mages. So anyway, this would be like my strong advice for wave 12. If you struggle with wave 12, uh, this is the place you want to stand and the lure that you want to use should make it a lot easier to break it up. It's also worth noting that these big mages put a burn on you. You'll notice it on my debuff bar right here. And this is basically a damage over time effect that you'll be taking. If you want to use the freedom ability to clear it, you can. You can also pray deflect magic. Uh, but yeah, did want to mention, if you notice that you're getting kind of obliterated by these mages, it's probably you having a burn and it is definitely worth using freedom on it. These big mages are no joke and they can hit like a bus. Then at that point, we are going to clear off the last mob and we're going to be heading in to wave 13. Wave 13, I like to stand in the same location, and wave 13 is similar to wave 12. It's probably usually considered to be the second hardest wave in the entire Zuck run, but if we do it this way, it should end up not too bad. 
For wave 13, you want to prioritize killing the big mage that spawns basically directly on top of your head. In this situation, what's going to happen is you're going to have a couple big rangers and a lot of small mages and all of them will be able to attack you at once. What I'm going to like to do is once the big mage is down, what I will be doing is I'm actually going to pray ranged and then I'm going to clear out all the mages. With deflect range on, the rangers won't do too much and the mages don't do a ton of damage until they've been alive for a long time. So it should be a nice effective way to clear them out. I also elected to use Death Skulls here, which is very optional, but it is definitely a good practice to use. Same can be said about Threads of Fate. This would be a really good opportunity to actually use some of your stacks and clear out this whole wave a lot faster. But once again, we're keeping things nice and easy and nice and low input here. Death Skulls though, absolutely very helpful. From this point on, all we have left is four mages, four big ones, and what I'd advise doing is if you can deal with them one at a time, that's probably a good way to minimize the amount of damage you're taking. So just kind of move around the room instead of going into the center of the room and tanking all of them. Just kind of stay on the outskirts, move around, and uh, yeah, you'll have a much easier time that way. If I'd gone into the middle of the room, there's a chance that I'm getting hit by both, and you just don't really want that. And that's basically it for wave 13. Now, wave 14 is another challenge wave, which we've seen a million times at this point. It is very, very repetitive. And I actually would say I prefer the normal mode ones because they're actually different each time at least. Um, but yeah, going through the challenge wave, there we go dealing some damage to Zuck. You'll notice in this challenge wave, I almost accidentally one cycled it, even without using my Necrosis stacks. And because of that, uh, we would have almost had to head right into the challenge wave. But fortunately, 967 life points remained. And because of that, we get to go back through the challenge wave another time and actually take the time that we need to get properly set up. So at this point, what I've done is upon clearing out all the Igneous mobs, I'm just going to build on Zuck's feet for a little bit. For the third challenge wave, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to use Barricade as the first attack is connecting with you. And the reason we got off of the boss for this part initially is we were at 100% Adrenaline. And at 100% Adrenaline, that's what you need to Barricade. So I didn't want my Revo Bar conjuring up a ghost and that messing up my Adrenaline. The other thing you can do too is if you're slightly short on adrenaline, you can also just drink your adrenaline potion, get up to 100%, and then barricade. It's worth noting here that I have the Malia Tops barricade perk that is extending my barricade and making it last longer. You're going to take a total of four hits here. It should last pretty much perfectly if you're using greater bone shield with your barricade. But there are lots of good alternatives if you have a shorter barricade. First option is to just bring a shield with the turtling perk on it, and then barricade with that instead of bone shield. If you do that, well, your barricade is going to last way longer than you need, up to a possible 16 or 17 seconds. Other options also include using the Disruption Shield spell in the Lunar Spellbook, or using the Resonance ability on either the first or the last hit. Totally depends on your setup, but those are all good options for the third challenge wave. But barricade should be kind of the bulk of it. After the challenge wave ends, we're going to head back over to the southeast corner for wave 16. Now, it's worth noting, you want to be patient here and let the Jads come to you. I did this incorrectly, so because I decided it was time to run out and attack the Jads, well, guess what? I ended up with two Jads attacking me. So instead of doing that, just be a little patient, let the Jads come over to you, and then that way you'll be able to clear them without ever having to worry about being hit by multiple at a time. And as you can see, be patient, wait for the Jads to come over, and then you can properly just deal with them one at a time. There should be no instance where you're ever tanking both at the same time, so yeah, just don't be like me. Be patient and you should be good to go. And third Jad is down. Uh, so for Haraken, it's ever so slightly different from normal mode. And the one difference is going to come up very early into it. Haraken will either spawn all the way east or all the way west. So what I'd advise doing is stand kind of towards the middle of the room and then just wait until you see his yellow dot appear on your minimap. And whichever direction that may be, you want to go in that direction and start attacking. You have a limited window of time to attack Haraken, so you kind of want to make sure that you're attacking him for as long as you possibly can. As for the abilities that you use, Death Skulls can be really solid, as well as just your general stacks from before. So Volley of Souls, as long as you have your maximum amount. And the same can be said about Finger of Death and your Death Grasp spec. All of them are good options, and you're just kind of going through those in any order, in any combination. No real rhyme or reason. The most important thing to look out for, though, is these little lava pools on the right and left side. Whenever they explode, you want to make sure that you move. If that hits you, you're not going to take a ton of damage, but it is going to lower your adrenaline, which is going to lower your ability to deal damage, and it's going to make this Haraken part take even longer. One thing to look out for for Haraken in hard mode is that he will actually bombard you during the point where he's attackable. And this one's extremely easy to avoid, but if you get caught unsuspecting, you can end up taking a ton of damage. What it's going to do is it's going to place an X basically on top of your current location, and it's going to be just a splatter of magma that will drain your adrenaline as well as deal a ton of damage. So what we want to make sure to do to dodge it is all you actually have to do is move three tiles either north, south, east, or west. 
The reason you have to go three tiles instead of two is in this instance, I clicked two tiles, but because I only went two tiles, what's happening is my character is not actually running, he is walking. And if you walk, your character moves too slowly and you will actually get hit just a tiny little bit by one of the hits. It's not the end of the world, but I did want to note that I did not move far enough here. If you click one tile further at that exact same timing, you will not be hit. Uh, but yeah, for that attack, it's really simple. Just step out of the way. You just want to make sure that you're not running along the line of it. So look at your world map, consult it, and make sure you're going directly north, south, east, or west, and you won't have any issues. And then it is more of the same. All we're doing is letting Revo take the wheel, spending our stacks as we have them, and something that you're going to notice here is if you look at Harakin's debuff bar over here, we'll zoom in on it, you're going to notice that he is not deathmarked. Deathmark is extremely effective on any kind of boss monster because it will actually deal up to 30,000 damage. So it's really, really worth the global cooldown. And you're going to notice here that because it was not applied, I'm actually going to take the time to apply it right now. And now you're going to see it appearing on a debuff bar. That's really all there is to the Harakin part. All you're doing is going back and forth. You're taking a look on the ground. And every time you see an explosion to his right or to his left, all you want to do is make sure that you're moving so that you're not getting your adrenaline drain. And you should have no issues getting through this in a couple cycles, but it is worth noting, you're not going to use any food for this section anyway, so if you need to go through multiple cycles, that is really not the end of the world. In a second here, Hurricane is going to go jump back in the lava, get a little swim in. Now we've got all of these tentacles that we can either kill or ignore. It is worth noting though, that in hard mode, there are some special kinds of tentacles and some of them that you do actually need to kill. So this, for example, is a warding magical tentacle. And what these ones do is they actually give Haraken damage reduction and damage soaking for the next time he comes back up. So if you leave all of these alive, you'll end up with a Haraken that will not take any damage from any hits below like 2000. So if you do not kill these, basically your conjurers are not gonna be able to do any damage. During this downtime, you can get bombarded, but by far the most important thing is just make sure that you are killing these warding tentacles. You're also gonna find piercing tentacles that lower your armor rating temporarily. They are not very high priority. They don't seem to do a huge amount of damage to you and they're not really the end of the world. But generally speaking, all you need to prioritize is making sure that you're getting rid of the warding tentacles as they spawn. If you have one or two alive, it's not really the end of the world, but if you have like five or six, you're gonna have a really bad time finishing off Harakin. And after not very much time, what's gonna happen is Harakin is gonna respawn. It can be on the opposite side. And then all you have to do is simply finish him off. You're gonna notice there I used Volley of Souls and I'm spending my stacks appropriately here. But because I know I have plenty of time to get him finished off, I'm not using every single one of my stacks. You'll notice I used Finger of Death there, but I do still have six Necrosis stacks and now he's death marked. And at this point, we can get on to Zuck. It's worth noting here that you can throw a Vuln Bomb and you're also able to deathmark Zuck now. If you try to deathmark before this point, it's not gonna work, but once he's attackable, you can actually apply deathmark and it should show up on his debuff bar, which is great. We're going into Zuck here without very much adrenaline, but that is not a problem at all. And the Zuck part of this fight is actually a lot easier than the waves can be at times. So, very quick overview of the mechanics. Whenever he says you will break beneath me, all you wanna do is use freedom. And then we are back to letting our Revo bar take the wheel and dealing as much damage as we can, spending our stacks when we have them, if you wanna do that. And now, because I've got super restores on me, when he says burn, I'm actually not gonna move at all. I'm gonna completely ignore the entire attack and we're just gonna stand pat. And as you notice my max life points draining here, what I will do is whenever they get low, I'm just gonna drink a super restore and they'll come back up to full. It's kind of a cheese strategy to just drink a super restore and avoid the mechanic, but hey, I'm not the one that made the mechanic cheesable, so if you have a problem with it, not my fault. When Zuck says tremble before me, he's going to swing his sword in a 180 degree arc, and then he's going to leave a bunch of fissures on the floor. If you stand in those fissures, you're going to take typeless damage, and it is going to be extremely painful, to the point that you may even need to eat some food. And it's also going to put a burn on you that you're going to have to freedom but it's worth noting that your freedom should still be on cooldown from the first mechanic. So basically, if you're standing in the fissures, you're gonna take a little bit of damage, which is not ideal. So just try to prioritize avoiding those fissures on the floor and you should be completely fine. The mechanic after this is also an extremely easy one where he'll say full flame burns within me or he'll just say die. And when he does this, he's gonna take a rock from the ceiling and drop it on your head. Fortunately, this is only gonna hit about 3000 damage, even if you choose to just face tank it, but if you wanted to, you could also use resonance. And that is the full set of Zuck's mechanics outside of pizza time. So there's one more mechanic to go through, and then he's just gonna repeat this over and over and over again until the final phase. For pizza time, Zuck is gonna say fall and burn to ash, and then he's gonna stun you. And my advice at this point is to use freedom or anticipate if you're quick. If you anticipate before he stuns you, you won't get stunned at all. 
And then at that point, all you want to make sure you do is move over to the northeast corner because that's where the first igneous bob is going to spawn. This part can be very difficult because it's basically a DPS check. We have three igneous mobs spawning one after the other, and you have to kill them fast enough or you will be insta-killed. But I'm going to put the rotation I used for each of them on screen, and if you follow this method, you should have absolutely no issues with it whatsoever. So for the first mob, I'm going to tag him with Soul Strike because you need to stun him to be able to deal full damage. And then after that point, I'm going to use Volley of Souls. Even with only two soul stacks, Volley of Souls is enough damage that my conjurers are going to finish off the rest. Once the first mob is dead, I'm just going to build on Zuck because you're going to have extra time. And then as soon as the pizza closes out and disappears and the fire disappears, all I'm going to do is I'm going to surge towards the next mob that is going to spawn directly to the south. And for the second mob, you need to use a powerful ability to do full damage, which is Finger of Death. So I would elect to just use Finger of Death one singular time, and then a Revo will do the rest. If you want to use Finger of Death twice to get it even faster, you're welcome to. But uh, yeah, for me, I only needed it once. And then it's exactly the same deal. We're going to wait around for a little bit. And then in just a second here, the third and final mob is going to spawn. For this one, you just need to make sure you're standing in the bubble. So for this one, you can actually just let Revo do the entire thing. If you want to use Finger of Death because you're worried about the timing, that's fine. But uh, yeah, the skeleton should be more than enough damage as is just to completely take it out for you. After this third mob spawns, Zuck is going to start charging a bomb attack and you're going to see your special action button. This little bar underneath his head that I've highlighted, as soon as it gets completely full, you're going to get insta-killed. And it's actually a hard type insta-kill, so it'll kill you through a sign of life, through everything. So that's sort of the time pressure on the pizza time. But as you can see here, even letting Revo do the vast majority of it, we have more than enough time to get out of this pizza phase without having to worry about it. If you want to disrupt the attack, just hit your special action button on screen, and as soon as you do, the attack will stop. So there we go. You interrupt the powerful attack, and then this just completely repeats. So it's the exact same attacks in the exact same order as last time. Once again, very first attack, you will break beneath me, and I'm going to use freedom. Second attack, I'm going to completely ignore. And then the third attack, I'm just making sure that I'm not staying in the fissures. For the rock on the head attack that's about to happen here, this time I'm going to elect to use resonance. But once again, if you tank it, it'll only hit you about 3,000 damage. And we're going to continue through the fight. And now we're in to a second pizza time. The second pizza time is exactly the same as the last one. And we are just going to continue repeating and rotating through the fight. Now, something that's worth noting here is you're going to look at my maximum life points and notice that it's actually 10,000 instead of 15,000. And this is because I have not been doing a good job of drinking my super restores. So just a very quick note here is you do need to pay attention to your max HP if you are choosing to tank mechanics. Because as of right now, I'm looking at my HP bar. I think I have a bunch of life points, but I actually only have 5,000 because my max HP is only 10,000. So just a very quick note that your HP bar can actually lie to you. And I noticed here that when I took a 1,000 hit, my HP dropped a ton. And then at that point I was like, wait, and I started drinking super restores. And then at that point, my HP is going to be all the way back up to 13,000. If you don't notice that, you can really get caught out by it because your max HP could just end up being 3,000 and then you get hit a 500, but it kills you. So just a, a very quick note is you do need to pay attention to your max HP or alternatively, just make sure you're consuming a lot of super restores periodically. Uh, it won't drop on you instantaneously. It drops really, really slowly, but it can creep up on you where it'll look like you're full HP, but you're actually not. And as soon as I noticed, all I did is I drank some super restores and now my max HP is 15,497 again. We're going to get one other round of pizza time at this point, and then we're going to be back on Zuck and we're about to head into the final phase. So this final phase can be really, really difficult, but with this setup, it's actually kind of a bit of a joke. The thing that makes it a little difficult is you do need to be moving constantly. And because of that, you do need a little bit of manual combat because your Revo bar isn't going to fire while you're running. But I promise if that sounds intimidating, it is not because we've got a setup that should allow it to basically complete itself. Worth noting, this is the point that you'd want to do your stamina potion. I'm also going to note that there's currently a bug with Deathmark. So if you're casting Deathmark or you're using the tier 90, 70, or 80 power gear, there are points where this Spire can double die. It will die twice back to back, and then you'll get two bombs back to back. So my advice would be to not use Deathmark for this last phase. Uh, it's great if you're going for speed kills, but if you're learning, it can be quite painful. So you're going to drink your stamina potion just to make sure that you're not going to run out of run energy. And at this point, all we're going to do is we are going to run around this spire over and over and over again just to make sure that we're dodging the bombs the closer you are to the middle of them the more damage you take if you're in the outer ring you'll only take like an 800 if you're right in the middle it'll be like a five or six thousand all we're gonna do is we're gonna use some manual combat to get through the spire it is worth noting here 
that you could quite literally just spam your basic attack key for this entire segment. You're not being attacked throughout it. You're not taking any damage throughout it. So if you're not someone that is inclined to do any kind of manual at all, you don't have keybind set up, you could just keybind one singular thing and be fine. Um, but if you want to, you know, go a little bit above and beyond, you can do some stack management. You can kill it however you'd really like. But yeah, worth noting, you don't need anything super fancy here. You don't need to be good at manual. This isn't a DPS check. There's no time limit. Take as long as you need, or alternatively, just let your skeleton do all the work. As soon as you kill the conduit each time, Zuck charges up a bomb that he's going to launch directly at your character. This bomb isn't location-based. It is going to hit you no matter what. And normally, this can be a really tough mechanic because it can deal a lot of damage to you, and you have to use a defensive ability or a vitality potion to avoid being one-shot. But this is where I go through the real beauty of this setup. Because for this bomb, I elected to do absolutely nothing. And it only hit me 9,000 damage of the 15,000 that I have. And that is why I think this is the coolest setup of all. Because I currently have a full invent of food and I don't need to use anything for this bomb. It just hits me a 9k and I can go back to attacking the conduit and continuing to kill it. You can eat food if you want to. And what I did this time around is every single time I got this bomb, I dealt with it in a different way. I'm not advising that you just tank the whole thing to your face, but if you wanted to, you absolutely could. For the second one, what I've done here is I've decided to use the resonance ability. Resonance will just make it hit a zero, so that's by far your best bet. And then heading through it the third time, what I elected to do for this third one is I decided to use the power burst of vitality because I think it's really funny with this armor set, just having an absolutely ridiculous amount of life points. So you're gonna see in a second here, I've killed it the third time. And then I am going to Vitpot. And with the Vitpot, I currently have 31,000 life points. So uh, a 9k out of 31,000, not a tremendously huge deal. And then once it's dead the fourth time, what's going to happen is I'm going to elect to use Resonance again, because once again, that's the best option if you have it available. Really, really easy, especially with Bone Shield. And then all we're going to do here is we are going to kill this conduit one final time. And as soon as the conduit dies, that will be a flawless hard mode Zuck run in some very inexpensive gear, um, plus 10 hero points for me. And yeah, 39 minutes, almost no food or supplies used uh, with a setup that I think is, is really, really clean, very, very easy, doesn't require a whole lot of anything, super fancy. Let me know what you thought of the method. If there are other talk throughs you want me to make for other methods, feel free to let me know or for other boss fights. Uh, yeah, comments are the place to be. And once again, thank you all so much for the support on the videos of late. I really appreciate it. I hope this helps some of you out and best of luck. That's a